right folks here we go a little bit of intro music for you Oh yeah! Yes, 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 yes. Tear feed. Don Heim on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast brought to you once again by your host. My name is Jesse. This is a Midgard Musings production. Hail and welcome. And hope you are all doing well. Um, got a very special guest lined up today. And uh, looking forward to having him come on here and talk with me about a variety of things. Hopefully we'll be getting into all kinds of fun and exciting things. But uh, had a had an interesting topic that I was not even really talking to him about um a couple of weeks ago and uh, maybe two three weeks ago now at this point and uh thought that it would be a great subject for our uh our, our podcast so i'm going to be welcoming in jm olifson here in just a minute uh or two or three after we get into our uh midgard musings intro so let's go ahead kick the show off get some of the housekeeping stuff out of the way and welcome in jm here we go all right yeah so uh Thanks again, everybody, for all of your amazing ongoing support with this podcast, uh, with the channel. You know, the uh, Spotify has opened up this wonderful video viewing experience. So for you folks that are on the Spotify platform, you can uh, not just listen to the podcast, but if you want, you can also watch it, just like the folks here on YouTube now. It has been a busy week since the last uh, uh, episode aired, uh, as most weeks are. And, um, but, uh, we're finally getting into that, you know, coolness of the weather, you know, it's, uh, several days now. Oh, wow. It's a week, literally a week at the time of, uh, you guys seeing this, it's a, it's a week and a day after the start of, of winter nights, you know? So the winter nights, uh, thing was a, a three night long celebration, uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. Um, didn't, didn't get a chance to, you know, kind of ring it in as I would have wanted with, uh, you know, the drumming and, and some other stuff, but, uh, probably talk a little bit about that here in just a minute. Um, but as far as all the housekeeping stuff goes, you know, if you guys don't care, check out the description, check out the show notes. Um, there's a link tree link that's posted up there or down there. And, um, you know, it shows all the ways that you can support. Uh, what I do here on this podcast, as well as give you some monetary options on the ways that you can do so as well, you know, uh, become a channel member on YouTube, become a patron on Patreon. Um, you can buy merchandise through spring. You can, uh, yeah, all kinds of stuff like that. So check out that link tree. Of course, follow me on all my social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, give me a follow, give me a like, uh, subscribe to all that kind of fun stuff definitely helps with the growth of things like this that we're doing here today. And uh, yeah, definitely appreciate it. If you're listening on your podcast platform of choice, be sure to favorite it or upvote it in some way to let the, uh, the algorithms and let the, uh, the rankings and all that know that Random Heathen Ramblings is one of your favorite uh, heathen podcasts out here on the airwaves, as it were. So without further ado, um, you guys have heard of him, hopefully, at Fjallvatir Workshop, J.M. Olufsen, the one in the, the same. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and 
welcome him to the show and see what we are going to talk about today. All right, welcome uh, everyone and welcome to the show, uh, J.M. Olufsen, my friend from uh, North Carolina, uh, kind of a man of many talents, I would say, uh, a shaman, a wonderful craftsman. Uh, Fjallvatir Workshop is your company. We're going to talk about all kinds of fun stuff today. So welcome to the podcast, uh, JM. Halen, welcome. Thank you for having me on. It's awesome to be here. Right. And yeah, so uh, I, I mentioned earlier before you came on with uh, <clears throat> like the little intro thing that I do. Um, some people who've been following either the podcast or Midgard Musings uh, in general know of you because you've been on the, on the channel before like we've done like a you've actually been there a couple of times you know i uh i interviewed you kind of you interviewed me like we had this pretty neat i think thing going there for a while so people may be familiar with who you are and all that but if uh for anyone that's new you know listening to the show or needs a lead, needs a little bit of a reminder why don't you uh if you don't mind sir just kind of introduce yourself and and what your role is in the pagan community are around or the heathen community well a lot like you had mentioned um in the craft work with Fjallvatir and also in my practice in shamanism both of those really kind of go hand in hand to craft and create for the community and um, spiritual needs and whatever else gets you through in your your ritual wares or uh, your general practice um it's great to be able to do what I love doing and give back at the same time. It's a labor of love that is that cycle that keeps going and goes out and comes back and goes out and comes back. I work a lot with my hands and leather work, I try to do everything as traditional as possible. You guys have seen a lot of the stuff on there, the wood and, and the tools and the creations that we come up with. To, yeah and i actually yeah i own one of them well i own you know some of your i don't i don't i own a couple of pieces of your work but in terms of like you know ritual work uh you're talking about like the the drums and and the rattles and uh some of the other i mean your rune sets the boxes just all kinds of stuff it's it's mostly i think wood and leather work right i don't know if you get into any of the other like materials cloth or, or whatever do you do you make like any, like we haven't invested in an anvil or a forge just yet but okay it's been passed around a little bit but yeah um, that's something that a lot of people see and it's admirable and it's the things that you can create through that process but it's one of those where your your eyes are bigger than your stomach those things take years and years of apprenticeship and practice and know-how to, to craft these things so it may be something that i'll look into and getting some practice in but it would be a long 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 time before i'm hammering out any kind of usable steel yeah yeah but your work is phenomenal i mean i i i'm a, our tribe i should i always say like it's it's you know i have a drum but it, the the more accurate um i guess description is that we have a drum our tribe you know me and my people here like it's it it stays with me at you know my wife's in my house but it's the way i see it is it's it's a tribal drum right it's it's a something that we use uh together when we get together and when we do things and it and it's definitely gotten it's it's working you know very recently so um you know for everyone listening and watching and, and all that kind of stuff you guys want to check out um Fjallvatir the links for the website um you've got you know facebook i know you that's i think is that the only social media there's a, there's, a, there's an instagram i think yeah, as we well and instagram yeah and that's that's about the limit on our, our social media presence yeah so all that'll be like you know in the show notes description area you guys want to see more of what uh jam does you'll find it on his you know social media the, the stuff that he posts up there um and then check out the website and see if there's anything that you want uh jam to work on i i mean i'm really happy with the uh, the commission piece for our tribe you know everything that i was 
talking with you about uh, JM. And I think this goes into a bit about what you were mentioning earlier with you know crafting and, and working and how it's you know it's more than just the the tactile stuff. You know, it's more than just you know carving a rune set or it's more than just you know stretching a skin over a wooden frame to make a drum. There there's like a ritual element to it. And I felt that when like I spoke with you and started to describe what we were looking for uh you know sound wise aesthetic wise you know uh what we were looking for in our in our drum and you know you listened to my ideas but and then you you know kind of fed that with your own knowledge and understanding of how are we going to accomplish that and oh well so you asked for this but i think if you want a certain result you should consider something else you know so you were very open to it and i felt like it was I felt like there was a lot of magic involved with that, you know, the sharing of ideas and, and, and creating something that really satisfied us um, completely. You know, like it was, it looks like what we want it to look like. It sounds like what we want it to sound like. It feels, it just it has that whole essence to it. And uh, I don't think you could get that with just, you know, heading over to Amazon or, or any other sort of, you know, mass produced, <laughs> you know conveyor belt type of thing and then say yeah this is what i want you don't you don't get the same results out of it you know you've got to give to it what you want to get from it so if you give it that heart and that soul and that spirit that's what it's going to give back yeah and i mean i think that just from the the drum that i have or that we have and then there's a uh, you know you made a candle a tea light candle holder for me a while back that still stays on uh, my altar. Um, even some something as seemingly simple as that, you know, just people think you're crazy if, if if you if you tell them that there's you know you get a feeling from holding a certain object or you get feeling from wielding a certain object, you know, because the object is just in and of itself without any sort of uh, anything done to it is is just an inanimate object. It just is what it is, but with what you've done with them, I feel like it's uh, it makes them such, something much more uh, special and, and serves a greater purpose, you know, for us as, of, as heathens. A bit of an animist touch when you believe yep. that it has that spirit or can embody that spirit. You get to work with it as a spirit. Yeah, so I mean, I kind of have you and I've been friends for, you know, a relatively short period of time last few years i'd say uh or give or take you know a month or so here and there but um i don't know like just seeing seeing like where you where you were and i'm sure you seeing me where i was and how we kind of follow each other on our on our respective journeys you know you're you're in a place now that you weren't years ago or even a year ago and same way with me you know um and it's and it's amazing to, for me to think about how the the lives of, of ourselves and the lives of people around us uh, kind of help forge or shape the, the 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 beings that we become. You know, it's like you got to be a bit fluid and you got to be uh, flexible to adapt to scenarios and adapt to things. And if anything that I've experienced, like in the past year or so, it's that you know. You just don't ever know what's gonna, what kind of curveball you're gonna hit, or what kind of bend in the river you're gonna have to to lean into, and just I don't know if that's I don't know if you felt that sort of way too, just over the years, especially recently. But it, to me, it's been unavoidable. It's like you can't get away from it. Absolutely, there's there's always going to be change. That's why we call it a path, a journey in life. You're always moving. It's changing, and you're gonna encounter different things. And um, I think a big part of it is becoming comfortable with yourself and learning how to be yourself. I get asked all the time, how long have you been practicing? And I throw this, what sounds like a cop-out answer, lifelong. Like, no, no, how long have you really been? So I say, no, I really believe that. I've been practicing lifelong, you know, the norm decree the beginning and the end and what's in the middle is our control but the universe knows it knows who we are what we are what we're to become but when we're born and we grow up we have to spend so much time just learning how to exist how to crawl how to walk how to feed ourselves how to talk how to communicate 
So we have to learn how to be people for so much, this big chunk of our early lives. Then once we learn how to become people, we can learn how to become ourselves. We can learn who we are in that people. And I think that point of discovery aids in the rest of the journey because if you can become comfortable with yourself in your path and in your direction, then you're going to take all those curveballs a little bit easier. It's not going to be such a rocky road. Uh, your mindset will be a little bit different. Your outlook. You know, roll with the punches like you were talking about. You, just, you keep on going. Things change and things are different. You get hit with something out of nowhere. But when you feel comfortable in yourself and you know yourself and you trust in yourself, you, you trust that you're going to keep chucking and yeah. yeah and i think too that you know with with as much focus as one can have on themselves and, and, and developing themselves you know there's there's a large part of it to me that also um has there's 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 a there's importance place and i've talked about this on almost every podcast about uh tribe and community and the society that you're um interwoven in with how your lives as an individual as a family can can inter you know they, they, it's, they're woven in with other people's lives and there's this um you know we can uh, over time develop relationships with with friends and, and those friends become or can become uh, extensions of our family and how much of that also helps us in in shaping our lives because let me let's face it sometimes we we hit points in our lives where we're just like enough already you know where we feel like it's just that's it for me that's all i want to do I'm, i've hit a wall that, or you don't really know where to go and then you've got those close friends and family those those kin and kith you know individuals in your life that uh um kind of like bring you back to like kind of almost like take you out of that funk bring you back to reality I'm like no man like you, you know you got this to do you can do this you can do that and i feel that without that you know without that close uh sense of tribe without that close sense of family that that family unit the extension of the family unit um we're missing out we're we're, we're leaving so much importance out of our lives by not having it there you know we'll, you don't have to face things alone you know kind of that that whole pack mentality that ties into some of what we're going to get into here in just a little bit with intent and purpose. That purpose, mm. um, those people that you surround yourself with, give you a sense of purpose and help you to continue to learn and understand and discover purpose throughout your path. And that's a really motivating thing when you hit those low places or states that when you feel purpose again, it can really pick you up out of a funk. I think that's really important to think of. Ties and people that you surround yourself with are, are crucial, vital to that. Yeah, no, I'm glad you said that because I know, man. Like for instance, like <clears throat> I was, uh, I was talking offline about this, and like before you came on, just kind of like laying the the foundations of things with with the what today's episode was going to be about, and um, at the time that this airs, right, uh, it's a week. And a day uh, past or, or since the start of the, like the historical Icelandic or the historical Scandinavian winter nights, you look at different sources. You look at different things. We, you know, uh, the the winter nights started um, three full moons before Yule. Uh, so, like from a historical reckoning, uh, last Wednesday was the start of winter nights, which was you know observed as a three night long celebration and. Uh, I had intentions of doing a certain thing. So talking about intent and purpose, right? I had intentions. I was intent on doing something specific for that, you know, kind of like drumming in under the moon and then having a fire and this and that and the other. Well, what ended up happening was none of that, <laughs> you know, I couldn't get out there and do any of that. And um, it was, there was a lot of, we talk about you know, life's curveballs, you know, um, I was, uh, looking at my car because of you know mechanical issues and 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 trying to deal with things going on in the family that i won't go into detail with here but just you know family 
uh, struggles, family strifes, and 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 things that have just been leading up to that day over the weeks and months prior. And you know, but I look at it and I go back and I go, wow, you know, my intent was to do something, and that's not what it was. It was that's not what my time was intended to be. Um, your intent, but it ended up not being your purpose. Yeah, yeah. And when you and I first were talking about this whole thing, this this was a discussion that you and I had had over like a phone call or something weeks ago before you came on here to talk about it more. And I was like, well, isn't intent, in, I mean, isn't it like the same thing? Isn't it just two different words that mean the same thing? And, uh, you know, your challenge was that, you know, there's there, it's not and what to think about. So I'm really, you know, I think I feel like now is like a good segue into what we're talking about here with, the differences between intent and purpose because intent we talk about like with sacrifice with offerings with things that we do either with our communities with our tribes uh in, in a way to connect to and with the gods or the sacred or the spirits and the land around it what the you know, everybody's like oh it's it's not just what it's not what you do it's the intention behind what you do it's the intent behind it and i think that was the door that that's what kind of opened the door for us to discuss intent and purpose and then how that can fit into just you know ritual or, or how it fits into everyday life so i know i just blurbed a whole bunch of stuff out about it but um let's uh let's let's talk about it you know let's let's dive into it a bit well it's for me a way that i like to add a little bit of depth to my practice my regular go about in what i do in a spiritual sense and my connection with the spiritual beings and those places and the difference in my eyes and in my experience comes down to things like will um, commitment conviction provide the difference between intent and purpose um, if you walk into a race and say it is my intent to win this race today. That sounds good and it's positive and it's believable. But then you've got another guy that walks in or another gal that walks into that race and says, it is my purpose to win this race today. And whoa, that's serious. This person really believes it. They're committed to it. They're going to do it. And even if they don't, I know that they've got it set in their mind because they believe it's their purpose that they're going to give it all they've got. So that conviction, that commitment to what may be your intent comes out as purpose. Um, you can look at the terms of mocked and croft. Both mean power, but mocked is more like the course of nature as it takes its way and the way of the universe, it's those things that are outside, like a thunderstorm or a waterfall, that's power, that's powerful. And then you've got Croft, it's still power, but it's in what we do and how we change things. We use that as an application of our will through intent to a purpose. It sounds like, right, the more you talk about it, like it sounds like, I don't know if you're familiar with the term, and I'm pretty sure it's an old English word, uh, but main, and it's spelled like M-A-E, like the Ash, the, the A-E combination, A-E-G-E-N, main, looks like Megan, but it's pronounced main, and it's, you know, everything has main, there's, there, there's power uh, in things all around, but, but you know, the application of it and, and the doing of it, how you, how we can increase our main, how we can increase or, or expand upon that main and make it something workable uh, with those around us, not just those who we see, but those things that we don't necessarily physically see, you know, the, the seen and the unseen forces that we, uh, <clears throat> I guess, you know, share existence with. To me, it means something like that yeah. um, to practice with purpose to act and to do these things not only with intent but with purpose 
um, to know, to understand. Um, it could be someone's intent to practice, let's go with ancestral veneration. Mm -hmm. My intent there is to, of course, honor my ancestors. So I do things like I'll leave a, a plate out or pour a drink out or some sort of votive or, or act or ritual to honor my ancestors in practicing that. That's my intent is to honor them. But what is the purpose? We don't think about the purpose. We think about the act. We think about the intent. The purpose through that intent is to gain that relationship or build or strengthen that relationship that you have with your ancestors. If you're practicing ancestral veneration, then surely you believe one day you will eventually join them. And what kind of welcoming would you like to have? You know, how would you like to be celebrated after you're gone by those you leave behind? Do you want them to just act with intent or with purpose and understand that relationship? Now that makes a lot of sense. The more I think about it, you know, it's, it's not what we do so much as why we do it which I think for a lot of us, like for me, for the longest, like, well, the why is the, like that, that's the intent, but it's not the why is, 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 is purpose. What you do, your intent behind it, like it, that's the, the, you know, like you say, you you expect to achieve a certain result, but why, why do you do it in that way? Why do you say the things you say? Why do you purpose. do the things you do? It's the, yeah, exactly the purpose behind it. If you can you find know? out the purpose or discover the purpose, then you can start practicing with purpose on purpose i feel that makes uh that that makes a pretty strong statement following on one of the last podcasts might have been last week um because some of the things that came up uh was that uh whatever you are and it could be you know you're heathen you're you're pagan you're christian you're buddhist you're hindu you're whatever you know uh be it and live it and, and a lot of people get, uh, you know, they, they think that well, well, paganism is the only real living religion or heathenry is a, is a living religion. And I, and I, and I challenge people to say, you know what, doesn't matter what you are, doesn't matter what your religion is, what your beliefs are. If that's what you're, if that's what, what kind of motivates you to, to, to be something, right. For, for whatever purpose it is, and you should be it, you should live as such and, and live accordingly and carry yourself with the same conviction uh, and purpose that uh, is, is a reflection on, on what your values and what you believe in. So yeah, that's, again, back to what I was talking about earlier, that turning point, we have to learn how to be people. And so we look for things like faiths and religions and ways to be people, but then you hit that point where it's time to start learning how to be yourself and be your true self, true to yourself. And that's where the real faith is. It's in your genuineness and your honesty and in your purpose. Yeah, because what, what purpose would you serve? How, how good of a person? And, and that probably goes into some other things too. You know, you can, you can serve a good purpose or you can serve an ill purpose depending on what you put yourself through or how you apply yourself right and your our purpose and, and uh, the the value that we have um to the people around us right is is placed on us by those people so if we are worth less or uh worth ill you know uh, it, it's because of the things that we've done and how much of ourselves have we neglected in that process when we're trying to either impress somebody or impress some people or oh look at i look at how well i can recite this bade or look at how well i can you know say this prayer in old norse and look at my pronunciation and look at this and look at that and whoa, whoa, whoa. like all this superficial stuff that purpose that you're doing it for is is not of, of real value of real worth i feel it goes into some really strong things you know i'm talking about one day becoming an ancestor and what we do our deeds you know our feed into that well and and talk about orlog and, and the layers of luck that have been laid down before us you know by the things that people before us did the purpose that they carried out it's 
it's more than just us in this moment. You know, it, it becomes something or, or, or could become something of greatness later on or a bill later on. I mean, it just is, it just becomes, <laughs> you know, I mean, Orlog doesn't measure, it's not measured by what's good or right or, or bad or whatever at the time. It just is, it just, it's there. So be careful of, you know, how much, or be careful of what we do, what we add, what, what our purpose is, is driving us to, to do the things that we do. I think our final purpose is to leave behind the life that we've lived for others. There's such great purpose in that passing and how you are remembered and the mm. lessons that people learn from you that you passed on to your children or even years after you're gone, grandkids will say, hey, remember granddad used to do this or grandma used to do this. And that was a really smart way. And that's that's helping me now. You know, your purpose is the life that you've lived when it all comes back to the cross and that cycle point again and, and leaving this life and earth. But like you were mentioning um, good purpose or bad purpose and this is such an awesome thing that's making a comeback um the lawn maintenance shaming <laughs> i'm such a fan of it <laughs> leave your yard alone it's okay um you don't have to have the leaf blower out the weed eater out the mower out three four five days a week it'll be right. okay i get some people live in like hoas where you get penalized if you're grass is a sixteenth of an inch too long, but um, your intent is to have a nice looking lawn, but what's the purpose? Yeah. What, you know, what's the purpose of What does it lawn? mean? Yeah. Why are you doing it? If you don't have to do it, why are you doing it? Why do you want it to look good? What's the purpose? Yeah, what do you want? Grass. <laughs> what do you really want, you know? You ever seen that movie, like The Notebook? Right. It wants well, to grow. It wants to be. It wants to exist. Yeah. Grass wants to give way to trees and plants and flowers and the bees need them. It just wants to grow. That's the earth. Yeah. That's yeah. I'm like, what do you want? Why are you doing this? What do you really want? Do you want to look good for that moment? Do you want to just be happy in that moment? Or do you want something that's, you know, and that's what's, I guess, I don't know if it's because of just age, you know, the older I get, um, the more mileage that gets put under these tires, so to speak, you know, I don't feel so much about what I'm doing in the moment as me as meaning anything more than just that. I look at what I do and see, well, what kind of ripple is this going to leave? What kind of echo is this going to, to re like what's going to resonate later on, you know, is what I do now going to be something that is worth anything later. And I guess for me that that's, that's, without really thinking about it, but hearing, you know, us talk about it now, like that's realizing purpose and applying it, you know, me at that moment last week, setting up a fire because I wanted to, or getting my drum out and drumming because I wanted to. And that to me was like, well, it's winter nights, right? I have to, it's, it's winter nights. I got to do it. This is, this is, you know, it's a thing, right? I got to do this. Well, there would have been no purpose of it, really. There would have been no real good purpose for me to do it at that moment because of all the other things that I had to address and take care of, you know, things of more meaningful value, things that had I ignored and had I not addressed, you know, could have had that ill effect where I was talking about just the, the bad things that, that end up in the well anyway. It's going to be there, but without feeding it, it's really just a layer that you got to get through at some point. It's really interesting how the cosmos and the universe help guide in that purpose and how you experience that change. You had intended to go out and play the drum, but other things happened that took your attention that you found were more important. You would have missed had those not come up. And it's even little things that people will pick up on and catch and notice later on in their adult life that they'll remember being a little kid and how much they loved to play in the dirt, but then didn't do it for years. And now one of their favorite things is to go out in the morning and work in the garden and get their hands in the dirt. Like the universe knows who you are, who you're going to be, but we've got to go through that process. And you get yeah. those little hints and reminders and, Poles and our ancestors are great for that to 
kind of keep us on track or steer us from too much peril if it's not our own doing. Mm. Yeah. Be like, hey, dude. <laughs> you give so much back that has been taken away as far as the place that I live and the way that the land had been maintained before I got here. I intend to give so much of that back, and I have been. And the purpose in that is to just do the right thing. It doesn't belong to me. I live here. I'm only going to be here this tiny, tiny little bit of time, but the trees that are growing here are going to outlive me by hundreds of years, and all the lives that they're going to support. The wildflowers have come back. There are more deer, there are more birds. It's going back to its natural balanced state. My intent aided in that ultimate purpose and that balance. That kind of bringing it, yeah, good, bringing it back to the way it, it, you know, originally was or closer to that, you know, primal. About people affecting other people. And this happens with the, the same analogy or reference with the lawns. Like, one neighbor will mow and then the next day the other neighbor feels like they have to mow because the other neighbor <laughs> mowed and like yeah I know. and i see us doing this a lot in practice um even seasoned people that have been practicing for years will see somebody do something and they'll they'll imitate it or incorporate it into their practice with the intent of doing the same thing because it's a form of practice and they want to practice but they don't know the purpose. Yeah. We're parroting, we're parroting without understanding. And so we lose value in practice when we do that. We lose the meaningfulness that is supposed to be there because we're not taking the time to understand its purpose. We're only seeing or thinking of our intentions and it's to practice. And it can come innocent. It's not that we're just copying to do it, to look cool. It's a lot of young folk are really eager to practice and they haven't found the resources um, to really get into it. So they see things and they repeat those things to get into it. But you really, you really got to get to a point where you start understanding why it is you're doing what you're doing. Otherwise you're just droning. There's no meaning to it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's, I mean, that's, it's really interesting because like the, uh, I was talking to a fella um, uh, earlier this week, uh, a few days ago now, and, uh, you know, he had been out doing some drumming and stuff. And, and I, and I don't know, again, if it was, you know, like you were saying, you know, seeing other people talking about doing it for winter nights. And he's like, yeah, I want to do that. Um, I think it's more than that. I think it goes way more than that, actually. But suffice it to say, a lot of us are or were thinking along the same lines of doing it for, you know, or whatever, our own reasons or, or purpose, um, but to do the same thing or something similar. And he's, you know, sharing with me, you know, kind of how he got himself into that mindset. You know, he's he, he painted up his face. He dressed a certain way. He, you know, very incorporated that ritual theater uh, element that I feel really helps us um, approach ritual more wholesomely, right? Because like otherwise, like yeah, not that you can't do ritual without doing all that stuff, but really, like when you put on the garb, when you put on that mantle, when you paint yourself in that way, it really helps put you in that mindset. And I was asking him, I'm like, so why did you do this? Why did you do that? Just to see what he said, and he was giving me these like really you know, insightful answers. And uh, he's, and he was a bit reserved. He's like, I don't know, really know if that makes sense or whatever. I said, dude, it makes total sense for you. And you sharing it with me makes enough sense for me to know that you're on the right, like you're doing it for the right reasons. Your purpose is correct. You know, doesn't matter what I think about what your rune on your face means or whatever. You had a reason for it. You have a purpose for it and you lived it out. You expressed it. And like, that to me was like that that's great you know to see that something that maybe in, was that he was inspired by was lived out with true purpose behind it you know not just for the sake of doing it because it was the full moon and everybody else may be doing it i i share a lot of my practice and ritual and i do it in a way to help motivate and inspire others to feel yourself and 
get into that spirit and be your true self. And we've come a long way from having to hide the ridicule and persecution. Like the times have changed the last 15, 20 years. Um, the Bible thumping and things like that, it's, it's lost its deafening tone, I think. And so we have this opportunity to be who we should be and return to tradition and roots and things like that. So I don't mind to share a lot of what I do in practice and ritual. And I get a lot of comments that your outfit looks awesome. I love your ritual wear. I want to make something like that. I'm going to make something like that. Where did you get this piece? And I make 99% of my ritual wear and my ritual garb. But the biggest point that I want people to understand when they see me wearing that is each element I have on serves a purpose. Mm -hmm. Every single thing that I incorporate into that is serving a purpose. It's on purpose. Yeah, and so, you know, for other people out here listening, watching, right? Find your purpose. Yeah. Now, the but, intent is for it to look good, to be well-dressed, to honor those spirits and show that you made an effort, you gave a damn about how you're presenting yourself when you're reaching out to them to communicate with them. I'm not going to show up in some holy boxers or underwear i'm gonna i'm gonna make an effort it's like you know you're communicating with someone that more than deserves your respect and effort and so our intent is to look good for that but then our purpose in what we wear goes into a lot of different things and some of the things you see like the mjolnir has been known for the longest time to be worn as a symbol of being a Thor's member for that protection of Mjolnir, the protector of Midgard and mankind. It's a lot of things like that, but on a larger scale, whether it be um, painting or a headdress or other magical symbols or pieces of ritual wear, a drum, a rattle, a horns. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, was, I can't remember where, it might have just been like on a, on a social media post um, <clears throat> that I would made on, I don't remember which platform where it was, but um, it was something to do with the drum and, and drumming. And um, I think I may have even had the drum on display or it was in a video or something. And somebody was asking, you know, like, oh, you know, or, or making a comment, you know, if I had a drum, I would do the same thing. Um, or whatever. And, and I thought about it and I responded, I says, well, I didn't always have a drum. And so when I was, you know, um, getting into that ritual state, whatever, I would stomp the earth. I would, I would get to the ground and I would beat the earth with my hands or my palms or my feet. And I would drum rhythm, even though it wasn't like on a framed, you know, animal skin drum, I was still capturing the essence of the rhythm, the heartbeat, the whole purpose behind it again this word you know the meaning of it this whole purpose the, the purpose behind it and why do we do it it's to you know for so many i guess different reasons or purposes why but the ultimate purpose to me was like to connect and feel that rhythm and feel that heartbeat and to me when i didn't have a drum it was you know kind of stomp dance you know uh on the ground you know uh you know stop drop and roll but you know what i mean just just feel it that way and then it was like they, they 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 reacted it to that that comment in such a way like huh never really thought of it that way there's a natural feel it's a natural pull to it to for rhythm there's a yeah. rhythm to the earth and everything from an actual drum that you beat with a stick or your hand to clapping or you see people hitting two sticks together maria friends from Hylum. Yep. is famous for like tapping those two bones just that simple sound i've seen people get into a drum circle without a drum and pat their chest mm -hmm. and even deeper than that you still have a drum because your heart da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, is constantly drumming so long as you're alive yeah 
Yeah, it's, it's that, all it's those that. connections and that rhythm. Yeah, it's like a constant. And with the rattle that we use for to connect in that frequency of the earth. Rhythms and beats and frequencies. And there's an amazing science behind it all now that's starting to come out. And a lot of people are getting on board with it. There's frequencies and hertz and the vibration of the earth itself. It's we really, really oh yeah, well, yeah no, uh, yeah to, like along that way. I, I saw something last week and I actually mentioned it um, on the podcast last week, but not like. So there's like there's there's a certain level of hertz that are. Uh, that our physical ears can capture, you know, like the frequencies, like, and even like things that are visible to us, there's, there's a certain frequency, a wavelength that we can see and that's it. And there's a certain wavelength or frequency that we can hear and that's it. And it's very small in comparison to what's out there or it's large, whatever, whatever the scale, however it goes, large, small, uh, which scientifically proves that there's more going on around us than we can really even see and hear. Oh, absolutely that we can tangibly absorb and, and pick up on. And, you know, you look at um, animals, you know, the things that animals can hear and see that, that he, the human mind or, or the human senses can't capture um, and all that stuff. So it's like, you know, you can't even argue the, the science behind it. Um, and, and it's, you know, I look at, you know, like you're talking like drum circles and, and stuff about uh, the, the indigenous uh, American indigenous peoples you know and, and the way that they uh express through song and through dance and, and rhythm and everything you know it's literally stomping ground dancing on the ground and what the purpose behind that is and how to connect to the spirit or spirits around them um so and yeah. animals one of those other amazing things you're talking about what we can hear versus what they can in that spectrum that that sound spectrum like elephants and whales can communicate in tones that we don't even hear that our ears can't pick up but to them travel miles and miles they can communicate from miles apart mm. so not being able to experience that it almost seems like a form of telepathy that they're communicating where we don't hear it. So is it really so strange to think that there are other communications in that way or in that form? It's just because it's not what we're used to or not what is typical for us or comfortable for us to think about. Yeah. We would rather consider that it doesn't exist. If I can't see it, if I can't hear it, if I can't touch it or taste it, yeah. it doesn't, but it does. We just have to think a little bit bigger than ourselves. Yeah, I think I think that we've become as a species so dependent on what's tangible and modern times have not really helped us uh, in that aspect because we, we live in a time in a, in, a, in, a, in a time frame or in a timeline, right, where everything is right then and now it's got to happen right away, you know, where's my package, let me track it, where's my order, let me track it on, you know, the app that I've got or where's my you know, where's my likes, reacts, comments, all this kind of stuff. We live in a very like instant gratification sort of thing. And, uh, you know, in, 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 in that way, uh, we're missing out on a lot of things that we could be in tune with, you know, um, uh, where I live, you know, is, is outside of the city, but close enough where the light pollutes the air to the point where you can't see the night sky as clearly as you would if you were further isolated away from it all you know and uh you 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 miss the certain sounds of nature uh, you know because of cars and traffic and this and that and it it does you know i think it, it definitely impacts us and affects us in ways that we become just so ingrained and used to this is life if i can't see it if i can't hear it if i can't experience it tangibly somehow then it must not be there and how do we get back to um reconnecting to those things around us that uh you may not just see right away or hear right away but they're there and if we slow down quiet ourselves listen and and look that they are 
in a way just as just as absorbable just as visible just as audible it just takes a little bit of extra work like you're saying I've talked about this before and it's some of the bulk of my work in shamanism is in helping people to establish that connection again or make that reconnect and as a society we've really done it to ourselves through this push and drive toward convenience like you're drinking that water right now um, <laughs> i can go into the kitchen and i can turn the tap and water is going to come out we don't appreciate water like people did even a hundred years ago 500 years ago when you had to to walk to a well or to a spring to get yeah. water to drink there was a different appreciation there was a deeper connection there and we've lost that in our pursuit of convenience and instant gratification as a culture as a society we want to go push that button and it happened turn that spigot and what we want comes out so we don't have that same connection because the appreciation isn't there things like food if you had to grow all of your own food or hunt or forage for your sustenance you're going to appreciate that a little bit more instead of throwing half of it in the trash like uh this doesn't taste the best so i'll eat something different later on right it's yeah or or how much yeah. food waste and just waste in general because we're not appreciating things the same way anymore Yeah, I think about, you know, the the environment that I that I you know grew up around and grew up in and was raised in and it was um well we did have, you know, it's not like I grew up without electricity, without running water. Um, but a lot of the the things that I did, you know, working on a farm, like it was, oh, you want some you want to get a drink of water, it's you know, you you didn't bring <laughs> A bucket with you or cat or, or bottles with you 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 went back to the farmhouse you picked up the 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 tin cup that was hanging around the well pump and you stood there and pumped until the water came out was clean and, and fit to be drunk you know because there was sediment and there's things that you know you just got to get those those uh the sediment and stuff out of there but you know you work for that and it may see something tri trivial but i remember we you know watering our cattle same way it wasn't turn on the hose it was carry buckets of water out to their trough from pumping it from the well, you know, um, same sort of thing, you know, uh, those, those cattle were our, you know, source of meat, you know, so, um, you raised them, you took care of them, you, you tended to them, you husband them, husband, you know what I mean? Like you took care of them and then, uh, slaughter them and, and process them and provided them. Uh, and they provided, you know, their their meat and, and all that for the for the community and even the, and the gardens and all that. Uh, and a lot of it I miss, you know. I mean, it was <laughs> Work to make sure that they didn't go without water. And the purpose was to keep these things alive because yeah. they in turn are keeping you alive. Right. The greater purpose to the intent. Man, that's 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 that that, that I don't think you can get any more real than that. You know, the purpose behind what we're doing. We're not just feeding these animals and watering these animals because they're hungry even though they are but the purpose is to take care of them because they serve a purpose and their purpose is to feed us later on it's that vicious cycle of life as it were but man that's <laughs> that's like the ex what better example could we possibly come up with really you know the applicable sense of purpose and uh hmm does man makes you makes you really sit back and think about just the conveniences that we have you know if i want something i can either call it in go drive and get it you know it becomes soft a bit <laughs> i'm just gonna say it you know the world's become soft uh and lazy and then you know when 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 the when the crap hits the fan and you know then you don't get that instant fix that instant solution you know people are lost they're like ah losing my mind you know <laughs> what's my purpose <laughs> i forgot a lot of people wanting to go just like super hardcore into the old ways and 
there's such an appreciation for that hard work, that farm work, like you're talking about. You appreciate everything more when you have to work for it. And I see a lot of people talk about returning to a life lived that way. Yeah, homesteading and more more honest. And that's great. And to each their own. But a lot of people will make the argument that, you know, we have gotten soft. How do our ancestors look at us? Do they, did they respect us for this? And I would have to say, hell yeah. Our ancestors that broke their back 10, 12 hours out in a field with a scythe every day in the beaten hot sun are going to see that we've come far enough in our thinking and our innovation and our technology to better our lives and do these things without killing ourselves at the age of 35 they're gonna be like sweet right on yeah man if i had that in my day I <laughs> right. already. you know they don't they're not upset with us for taking advantage of the tools and our our brain our thinking and our ability but i think where they might be saddened is in losing the appreciation for the purpose why are we cutting this field whether it's with a scythe or a reaper on a, or a combine, whatever. We lost the appreciation for why. We lost the appreciation and the purpose. So I don't think that the ancestors are knocking us for any of our modern conveniences, but maybe a little disappointed in um, what it's done yeah. for our spirituality and our appreciation mm. of being good people. Yeah, right, right, man, because so much of the the spirituality or the religion behind things now, like it was, it wasn't even really looked at it the same way, I don't think back then, like it was just life, you know, it was just the lifestyle, you know, we, we, they did what they did, and they uh, honored, respected, venerated the, the spirits or the gods as they were represented in their daily lives, the way they lived, the way they functioned, the way they provided, like it was it was the world that they lived in and it didn't have a special name or it didn't have a special, you know, label to it. It just was. And that need played such a huge part just in life. And there's that joke about paganism, like the old Apple commercial. We have an app for that. We have a God or we have a deity for that, whether it be, (laughs) the sea or the field or the forest or whatever yeah. but those mattered they were important yep. if you can't bring in a catch you go hungry your kids go hungry if you can't bring the crop in if you don't have a good harvest you're not going to make it the winter you're going to have to watch your children hurt from pain of hunger so we prayed to Freyr and to Njord and whatever we could do. That's how important it was. That's how much they appreciated just being able to live. And we lost the old gods because we started taking life itself for granted. It became easy. We didn't need it anymore. We didn't need to pray for a good harvest. We didn't need to pray for a successful hunt. We didn't need to to get spirits up and get motivated to go out into the woods and bring home some food. We lost it and we lost them in the process. Yeah. The purpose changed. So we're slowly getting them back because it's our intention, but what is our purpose in getting them back? Reconnecting with those old gods, performing these old rituals and, behaving in these these ways and in our practice what is our purpose it'd be something fun for folks to think about for a little bit yeah no i think the i think this is a lot of uh stuff this is a lot of uh you know things to digest mentally and 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 process it so i think that this uh this is a good spot for us to to call it an episode not gonna drop you get you just hang on a bit, but um, I th- you know I think this is this this puts us at a great stopping point. Right? So much that we've talked about, so much that we've 
brought up for people to consider, right, is your intention to do something, but why? What is the purpose? And, and, and I think everything that we've talked about thus far provides a lot of examples um, in, in the practical sense and in the metaphysical sense, you know, and then in, in our religious uh, approach to things. Um, we, we can apply it in so many different ways. I know it's definitely going to be something that, that sticks in my mind for a long time. And then maybe some, you know, more topics of discussion that, that come up around it. Cause I know this as a, this has definitely struck a nerve for me and I hope it has for, for others as It'll well. So really eye opening to experience the change when you start practicing with purpose, the genuine feeling that comes over between acting or practicing with intent and then practicing with purpose. It really gets deep for you and it's, it's rewarding spiritually. Yeah. That's good stuff, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate you wanting to take the time to really, you know, kind of gnaw on this and, and, and talk it out with me and then, and, and let everybody else kind of, you know, hear about it. So for everybody that's, you know, listening, watching, um, this is one that I would love to hear y'all's feedback on. Um, so if you're listening and you want to, you know, comment about this, you can always send a, uh, an email into the podcast. It's Midgard Musings TN at gmail.com. If you want to leave a, a voice message for me to listen to and then feature on the podcast next time, you can call the, uh, the Midgard Musings hotline and that's uh, 615-671-9832. It's 9832 it's open 24 hours a day seven days a week um or just comment on whatever platform you're listening on leave a leave a, a message leave a note i don't know throw me a paper airplane whatever because <laughs> uh, i'd love to hear what y'all think about this and um yeah this is awesome so huge shout out to you know to you uh jm for for taking the time out of your out of your night to to sit here and, and talk about this with us so um, be sure everyone down in the uh, description comments area, um, check out Fjallvatir workshop, um, pick you up something nice. The holidays are approaching us, right? So we got the Yule season coming up. Uh, I don't want to venture to say that, you know, JM needs work to do because he stays a busy man. But for, you know, if you're looking to maybe get some uh, last minute items in, uh, definitely check out and see what he's got and, and, and talk to him and see what he can provide for you and yours and you're going to love it. I don't just say that because I like the guy. I think he does amazing work and I would, uh, I wouldn't say it otherwise. So you did good stuff, man. Appreciate you being there. Thank you. Thank you. It's awesome to be on and thanks for the invite to, to come and ramble a little bit. Yeah. I, uh, I had a great time. So for all of you out here listening and watching, hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did be sure to upvote it in any way that you can on the podcast listening platform of your choice. If you're watching this on the YouTube premiere, give this video a like. Don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe. Um, and until we all talk again, hail to you all. May your hearth fires always burn bright. Stay healthy and do whatever it is that you do with purpose. So you guys have a great rest of your day, night, evening, whatever. We'll see you in the next one.